What? What? <laughs> oh my God. I am sitting here watching this. Things are going along fine. Nothing unexpected. Then the last five minutes, I'm like, what is happening? I'm way out. I'm so, wow. I will give credit to the writers because I did not see that coming. What is happening? Okay, let me talk about what I'm talking about. Last five minutes, June and Rara break up, right? Six months later, she's getting married to who? Dr. Cha. Creepy Dr. Cha. Why? I, I, I don't understand it. I don't get it. I'm like, you can't get married to someone else because you're lonely. You can't get married to somebody else just because you want to be nice. I don't, I don't understand what's happening, truly. Did she get married to him because he's sick? I mean, no one said he's sick, but I'm just trying to put the pieces together. Because she, before she said she didn't want to date him, and now they're getting married. Why? Why? I, I'm, I'm not happy with this let's let's start at the beginning shall we okay so we open this episode and Ra Ra is sad obviously she had to be away from June like June had to go back to Seoul and she had to stay in Unpo she's crying all the time her hair is straight I guess that's a stylistic decision they made they were like oh she's sad we'll make her hair straight they, they want to show development that way I guess right okay so then June is sitting there at his parents' house and he's just basically starving himself because what did we talk about last time? I mean, you can't force a kid to be with you. So it's like they literally have him on lockdown 24-7 and he's refusing his meals. I'm just like, what are you going to do? Are you going to force him to go to high school, force him to go to college, force him to get arranged and married? Like, there are limits to your abilities. I mean, how about you actually talk to your son? And Funny enough, the two people that he likes the most in the world actually talk to him about how he's feeling. Oh my goodness, I'm so charged up. I gotta take a breath. <sighs> so I'm worried about her because this is like the first time since her dad has passed away that I've actually seen her sad and down in the dumps and she is just like not having her happy-go-lucky attitude to get through through life. I'm also worried because let's be real, June was her cash machine and she's going to have to like pay her rent by herself and like I'm hoping that those two students she has left are going to cover it because one student she had was a um was a psychopath <laughs> who's probably in jail now. One student she had is like a kid and he can't pay anything. Um, and June, June was her student and June is gone now. So she really only has Harabuji, the grandfather and Dr. Cha as her students. And I'm like, and you, and they like pay a hundred dollars an hour, I think. And I'm like, $200 is not rent make. These are the calculations that are going on in my mind, right? I don't know if we're supposed to be like real life specific or not. But yeah, there's that. And then while June's away, she's finding out all these things about his past, like his about his best friend that died. And she's finding out about, about her friend. Oh my gosh, her friend came to visit her. And at the beginning, I was like, this is not a friend. Because her friend, like at the beginning, she was like, Ra Ra, don't come to me and cry about your problems. Everybody's got problems. Nobody wants to hear you cry about them. You just have to figure them out. And I was like, this girl is terrible i she's not a friend you know what get away from her but she came and then she came and you find out that her younger brother was june's best friend so recently she's lost her little brother and her mother is sick and then things start to come into focus because that is the type of thing like just stuff away your pain and nobody wants to hear about it is the type of thing that you say when you are in deep pain yourself so that made a lot more sense Oh my gosh. So after all that, June runs away, obviously. He comes back to meet Ra Ra. You know, they have a good time. And then they keep that up. They keep that up for like uh, maybe, I'm guessing, a few months. 
And then finally, um, he misses an appointment with his parents. And then that's when his mom decides that she's going to come down to Unpo, talk to uh, Rara and tell her that like she has to stay away from her son, right? When she gets there, oh my gosh, this is what I loved, okay? She went to go talk to Rara. Rara, Rara was prepared for it. The mom was like, I don't think you know that this is my most treasured son. I went through a lot to have him. You know, I had to use IVF and everything. And uh, Rob was like, I completely understand. Yeah, if it was my father and it was happening to me, I would probably do the same thing. And, you know, I didn't want to disappoint June before, but I will break up with him. And like, honestly, honestly, the Ajumas were really funny. The like the women of the neighborhood, they were really funny because they were like, she doesn't have a mom. We got to go over there and we got to stand up for her. Right. But once they got there and they saw how like, calmly coolly and collectedly she handled everything like they were proud of her like honestly she was a class act because the mom was like you need to stay away from my son and she was like i totally understand um i will take care of everything and by the way here's the money that i owe june for all that time that he took care of me <laughs> and it was funny because the mom was about to throw money at her like she always throws money at people but Ra Ra beat her to it and it was just like, you were really proud of her. But then that's when Ra Ra decides she's going to have a last date with June. So she goes up to Seoul. She has a last date with June. It's really great. When she comes back, she meets Dr. Cha. And um, at that point, she reveals that she always knew that Dr. Cha was do do so so la la so. Listen, I, I called that wrong. I could have sworn that do do so so la la was um the stalker like i in fact i think last time i said it was a parent it was a parent i called that wrong oh my gosh and then somehow six months later they're walking down the aisle stop it i i man they really they really got me in that last five minutes i'm just sitting there ah oh. and the funniest thing about it all is that People are always calling Rara a divorcee. And before, like, I don't even know how they could call her a divorcee because she never went through with the ceremony. She wasn't actually married. Like, she had a wedding day, but she never actually said the word. She wasn't married. And people call her a divorcee. Well, now I'm thinking that she walked, she was like in the middle of walking away with Dr. Cha. I think she went through the ceremony. So I'm like, you actually got married. Oh, and I forgot to tell you, like, the most, like, maybe important thing june ran up at the end of the wedding when she's walking away and he was like you're coming with me rara and he just took her hand and he ran and i was just like girl should you should you be getting married to anyone if somebody can just come in and take you like honestly <laughs> if someone can come and just take your hand and take you away from your own wedding should you be getting married to that person I think Rara is confused or I think she's pity marrying this doctor because um, maybe he's sick. That's my prediction right now. But clearly we saw how wrong I was about Dodo So So La La. And uh, wow, I'm, I'm baffled. Other notes. I really like those little kids now, those little high school kids. Oh my gosh. In the beginning, that little girl was so annoying. I was like, she needed a pop pop. You know what I'm saying? But... Yeah, she's gotten a lot better. I like how she and her friend are like getting some business sense. They're like, we need to go and like make a business together because their grades are so bad. And honestly, they were not invested in school at all. I think they should follow their own alternative path. Like go be business owners, go like blow it up. You know what I'm saying? And I'm still wondering about her accountant that stole all her money. I mean, she doesn't have to be rich again, but like my sense of justice is activated here. Like he shouldn't be able to get away with stealing all her money if he did. You know what I'm saying? So, oh my gosh, so much happened. I didn't even get to talk to you about like the flashbacks to like Harabu G's love story. You know, grandfather's love story. That was crazy too. Ah, 
crazy because they used the same actors for that. I don't know how I felt about that choice. I kept getting distracted. I can't even collect myself, guys. What do you expect to see in this next episode? I feel like the writers are doing a really good job giving us twists and turns. But what do you think is coming next? I think we only have four episodes left. So exciting times and we're getting there. Okay, guys. Uh, I will, I will, I will see you next week on Young Chickens. In the morning, in the evening, or sometime in between. I hope that you will see some Lexi on your screen. Subscribe. How does perfection feel, darling?